In this video, we'll talk about histone acetylation, which is one type of chromatin modification. Histone acetylation might lead to alteration of the chromatin, which might eventually change the gene expression pattern. So chromatin is made up of nucleosomes and these nucleosomes have histones and DNA as their component. So DNA is wrapped around the nucleosome and the accessibility of the DNA depends on how tightly this is wrapping the histone. If it is too tight, accessibility of the DNA would be low. And if it is loose, many other protein can actually interact with the DNA. So the histones are basic proteins, which has a conserved histone fold region and a tail. The histone tail is a site for extensive modification. There are many modifications that can occur in the tail, like acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation, ubiquitinylation. In this video, we'll focus on acetylation. Acetylation takes place in the lysine or arginine residue. So most commonly, it takes place in the lysine residues. Now let's talk about what are the consequences of histone acetylation. So here you can see only one segment of the nucleosome and the tails of the histones are acetylated. And this acetylation is laid by the enzyme histone acetyltransferase, which transfers the acetyl group from the acetyl CoA. Now let's see what are the real consequences. So histone and the DNA is kind of interacting with each other via electrostatic interaction. The phosphate group of the DNA backbone interacts with the NH3 plus group in the lysine and there is an electro electrostatic attraction between them. Now due to acetylation, the positive charge of the histone would be now masked. That means the interaction would be now weaker and thereby the DNA around the histone would slightly loosen up. That's what happened during histone acetylation. Now what is the consequence of the DNA being loosely packed? It becomes more accessible to many of the proteins. These proteins can be transcription factors, chromatin remodelers, which can overall change the transcription, chromatin landscape, etc. That might have long term effect in gene transcription. Now, where does this particular histone acetylation take place has deeper meaning. For example, if histone uh, acetylation take place at the H4 histone in the lysine 8 or 16 residue, often it has been noticed that these kind of modifications are associated with the transcription start site of the genes that are undergoing active gene expression. In contrast, if the, uh, as if the modification happens in the H4 lysine 5 to 12, often these kind of acetylation has been shown to be associated with newly synthesized H4 molecules, which are ready to be incorporated in a new nucleosome. So it's highly context dependent. Now acetylated histones are often associated with euchromatin, a region of the chromosome which is always active in terms of gene expression. Generally we don't see heterochromatin contains acetylated histone. Also acetylated histone in specific residues actually create a histone code and this histone code can be read by certain molecules. It's like a barcode scanner that you see in the supermarket. Let me tell you how. So there are three important questions that we should understand. Who writes the histone code? Who can read the histone code? And can this histone code be erased? So let's look at the writers. The writers of histone codes are actually histone acetyl transferases. And the histone code can also be erased by histone deacetylase. Now these histone code can be read by proteins which has the bromodomain. Bromodomain is a specific domain that binds to acetylated histones. There are many proteins which can bind to acetylated histones. They can even bind to acetylated histones uh, of two different domains of the 3D chromatin. Now these acetylated uh, histones can be uh, recognized by proteins such as nucleosome remodelers, such as transcription factors. So these are really important. So question is, 
what are the proteins that might have bromodomain. They could be transcription factors, transcription activators, nucleosome remodelers, and many others. So there are many acetyl transferase complexes. Some of the most common ones are the Saga complex, which has GCN5 as the active domain, and H3, H2B, these are the histones which gets modified. There are also PCAF complexes, P300, CBP complexes, which act on different, different histone residues. So each of these complexes has their own preferable histones, which they modify. So as per summary, we learned that histone acetylation can change the chromatin landscape by altering the DNA histone interaction. Histone acetylation is performed by histone acetyl transferase. So they are the writers. Histone acetylation is erased by histone deacetylase. They are the erasers and histone acetylation is interpreted by bromodomain containing protein. So they are the readers. Also acetylated histones are associated with euchromatin state. Acetylation at different histone residues has different outcomes in terms of chromatin landscape. So these are the overview of histone acetylation.